Whatever it is that you are interested in, whatever it is that you feel passionately about, will be hugely upgraded and improved and empowered through the introduction and the addition of open intelligence into that activity or interest. Open intelligence is the capacity to be completely stable, completely clear and completely open in all circumstances, without exception. And in the Balanced View training, what we're given is a really practical and powerful set of tools that allow for that instinctive recognition of the openness of our intelligence, that when you stop thinking, there's something there, there's an alertness, there's a cognizance. It's wide open like a clear sky. And through participating in the training, what becomes obvious is that that openness, that clarity, that relaxed ease, is the basis of everything that we experience, without exception. And what also became obvious to me was that all of the difficulties that I had in my life, all of the things that seemed to limit me, all of the things that seemed to make life difficult, difficult relating to myself, relating to other people, difficult in getting things done, was really just the focus and emphasis on data. So that's thoughts, emotions, sensations and other experiences. So for example, um, I can't think of any examples because it's all so easy now. <laughs> right, what used to be difficult? Um, public speaking. You, I, it, it, public speaking wasn't difficult for me before because I never did it. <laughs> Which was actually a perfect example of the avoidance of something that just made me, even the thought of it made me feel really uncomfortable, let alone actually doing it. And, um, but that is really interesting to apply this same insight to that circumstance and that activity and to see, well, wh wh why did I avoid it? What, you know, what, what was difficult there? And the difficulty was the thoughts that I had about doing it. You know, what will people think of me? Um, what will I say? The expectations I had on myself. You know, all kinds of emotions. Um, embarrassment or fear or um, and then the physical sensations as well you know the, the sweaty palms maybe we'll invite one of you up to share now can you feel your palms getting <laughs> sweaty and so there's these thoughts emotions and sensations which we can just simply call data and there's a stream of data so it's countless ceaseless and unpredictable they're always changing and what I'd been trained to do was to focus in on all of the descriptions, to really emphasize them. And when I emphasized these descriptions around something like speaking in public, there was just this complete paralysis, total avoidance. That was not something that I would ever do. You know, it was just far too intense, everything that I thought and felt and sensed around that. So then to apply the really simple practice that we're introduced to in the Balanced View training of taking short moments of allowing everything to be as it is. But not in an intellectual way. This practice and this training is experiential, which means that it has to be tested in your own experience with whatever you are thinking, feeling or sensing. And that is where you discover this great stability and this great openness. It's not about thinking about it or trying to work it out. There are many intellectual approaches to um, living life and understanding life and my experience of those was that um, I enjoyed them very much but um, it certainly didn't help me with public speaking or actually living life. So instead of trying to work things out, why not just relax and allow everything to be as it is? Test it out, see what happens and I was given that suggestion and that seemed kind of easy, that was something I could do. And I began to test that out with whatever I was thinking, feeling or sensing. And um, 
Probably like all of you, I think and I feel and I sense quite a lot throughout the day. All kinds of different things just, that just happen to pop into my mind stream. You know, thoughts of feeling happy, of feeling awkward, of feeling hungry, of feeling tired, um, being interested, being bored, just this continually changing display of descriptions. And so just to take a break from the constant focus on all of these descriptions and then trying to work out based on the analysis and thinking about these descriptions, describing the descriptions and then describing my descriptions of the descriptions and everything getting more and more complicated and me becoming more and more you know, paralyzed or frozen by all of the intensity that, of everything that was going on. Just, just to relax completely, just for a short moment, just an instant. Just stop describing everything. And in that instant there was that openness. There was the intelligence, obvious, that was the basis of all of those descriptions. And that in itself was a huge relief because I began to see that there was something about me that was absolutely stable and reliable and constant. And I'd known somehow that there was something about me that was constant. There was something that made me, me. But I didn't know what it was. I, I thought it was maybe one of the descriptions about who I was, but those descriptions kept changing. You know, I'm this kind of person, I'm a happy person. No, hold on, I'm not, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a quite a melancholy or a sad person. I'm, and, and, and these descriptions are always changing. I'm outgoing, oh no, I'm not, I'm, I'm an introvert. And, 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 and never really knowing, well, well, who am I? If these descriptions are always changing, well, well who on earth am I? I'm, I'm English, but hold on, I'm not spending any time in England. It's, but then introduced to this intelligence, this open intelligence that's naturally present, that's looking through your eyes right now. And the place that you will recognize it is in your current perception. This is a really, really key point. This is the inseparability of open intelligence from its own display of data. And each time we recognize that instinctively with any particular thought, emotion or sensation, first of all there's a sense of openness and ease. But what really interested me, or well, the openness and ease did really interest me, but what was really amazing was to see that this clarity of thought, this clear seeing as to exactly what was going on, was also immediately accessible. So it wasn't like I was dumbing down my intelligence by not describing everything. What I was doing was allowing the openness of my intelligence to become more obvious. And it's called an intelligence because it sees everything exactly as it is. Not through this filter or web of learned descriptions as to what everything is, but as everything actually is, this clear seeing. And in that clear seeing, we have the capacity then to make very clear, powerful decisions in a completely effortless and spontaneous way. So when it comes to caring for people or animals, that's a great example because most of us have that innate capacity or innate desire to want to care and love and support people. And I know that was certainly the case for me. You know, I wanted to be um, a, a loving person, a loving son, a loving partner, a loving brother, um, a loving friend. I wanted to be there and to support the people in my life. So I had, I had that innate desire. Um, and yet my capacity to be that kind of loving, caring, open-hearted person very rarely matched up to my desire. And what was holding me back was the emphasis on the data, was the emphasis on the thoughts, emotions and sensations that would just spontaneously arise when I was in that situation of caring for someone or supporting someone or looking after someone. You know, there would be thoughts of... Um, 
You know, even going in with the best intention, there'll be thoughts of resentment. Oh, why do I have to do this? Oh, this is, you know, this is just, you know, I want my time. This is, this is impinging on my time. Why do I have to look after this person? Or, or maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I should be doing more. I'm, I'm not doing enough. Or, and so we apply the practice of short moments to these data streams too. We recognize that they are the dynamic energy of open intelligence, inseparable from it. Like the color blue is inseparable from the sky. We can't take out the data from open intelligence. And we can't take out the color blue from the sky. They're inseparable. And it's this crucial juncture when this instinctive recognition of the inseparability of whatever we're thinking, feeling or sensing from the vastness of our intelligence is instinctively recognized that we're empowered to live as these easygoing, clear thinking, loving, capable human beings. Because we're no longer distracted or confused by our own thoughts, emotions and sensations. We know them to be exactly what they really are. This dynamic energy of open intelligence that's always changing. It's a spontaneous display. There's no way that you can, um, you, you, you can't hold a thought in place. Where was the thought that you had a second ago? Where, where was the sensation that you had in your body a minute ago? Where, where is it now? Where, where's it gone? And so we just get really clear on what's going on for us in our own experience. And that gives us this um, stable foundation for really seeing how we do want to live. And it is an amazing way to live. We're no longer a victim to our own thoughts, emotions and sensations. We can live life in a clear, easy-going way. And my experience of things like stress, what became clear to me was that what was stressful was the constant focus on different data. That I couldn't actually find something called stress. Now everybody talked about it and every talk, everybody seemed to talk about what you needed to do about it or how you had to avoid it. But, but what was it? What is it? Where? You know, I'm, I'm not actually sure, quite sure what stress is. We kind of agreed that there is this thing, but, but what is it? What, what colour does it have? What shape is it? And I saw that what was always stressful was the emphasis and focus only on the data. So the descriptions. And when I would describe myself as being stressed, that intensity of focus and emphasis on the descriptions was really full on. And it would be um, often really self-focused as well. You know, about, oh, I've got too much to do, I've got this to do, I can't do this, I don't know how to do that, this person now wants me to do that, don't they know how much I've got to do? And it was this focus on these descriptions that was, that was stressful. And to allow that intensity of experience to be as it was for a short moment meant that even when there was this kind of overwhelming um, intensity of experience, Again, the crucial juncture of recognizing that that too was inseparable from the open intelligence in which and as which it was appearing. And then that stress becomes our capacity to take action. But rather than being action that's taken in a slightly um, frantic or manic or desperate way, there is that same effortlessness of action and that ease and that openness that is the basis of our response to the thoughts we might have labelled as stressful or difficult. That same clarity of mind, that same ease of being is always accessible. And what is incredible is to recognise that this is something that we can train up. This is not a kind of random thing that some people are lucky enough to know and other people aren't. There's a training that allowed me to make that openness of intelligence increasingly obvious in all circumstances. And that training was called the Four Mainstays, the Balanced View Training. And the first part of that was the practice of short moments. 
and short moments repeated many times, testing out, gaining confidence that it was safe, it was all right to allow things to be as they were. Because it, it was so new to me, I, I'd never done that before. I'd always been doing something with what was going on, with what I was thinking. Even if it was just thinking about what I was thinking and just this endless cycles of thinking or, or trying to get rid of the emotions. You know, I felt miserable, all right, how, how can I get rid of this? How can I cheer myself up? And so this new approach of just allowing everything to be as it is, just for a short moment and, and testing that out. And when I did that, this, this ease, this openness, it was always there, like, like always. And I, I didn't really believe that. So I tested it. And in a way, if you, if you don't believe it and you're really cynical like I used to be, and you want to test short moments to prove that open intelligence isn't always available, then that's a great approach. <laughs> However it is for you, just test it. Get to know what is the nature of your own experience. What is it about you that is always constant? Is open intelligence always on? It's so important that you find out for yourself. This is the foundation of the Balanced View training. Each one of us knowing for ourselves what is the actual nature of our experience. Do data appear spontaneously and self-release naturally? Take the time to discover for yourself. So there's the short moments. And then there's the, the training, which is the training media. We have a website just bursting with media that's free to download. You know, talks that only confirm the nature of reality, books to download that talk about the different aspects and how that looks for different people in different parts of their life. Uh, the written trainings is part of that training and we have a one day introductory, we have a four day training that starts today, four day introductory training, which is a great way to go deeper into the training, to look at what, how does it look like in this circumstance? Or, or what about when I'm feeling this? Or how about this relationship? How, how do I apply it there? And to hear other people's experience is so inspiring. And, and that's the third support or mainstay is the community. A global community of people really committed to outshining data for the benefit of all. Because it starts off as it started off for me as a very self-centred project. I wanted to know open intelligence. I want to feel at ease with myself. And once I discovered that, well, okay, well, I am at ease with myself. Well, what, what now? Very rapidly opens out into um, an all-centred project as opposed to a self-centred project. That, that natural disposition of openness and care and the desire to benefit others is just enlivened within within each of us. It's there anyway, it just needs to be um, tickled awake. And the last, may, and so we have a four-day training, but there's, you're welcome to come and check out the written training today. Um, and if you're interested and that's something you'd like to do, then come to the information table and we can speak about how that works. And then the last mainstay um, is the trainer. And trainers are ordinary people, just like you, who have made the commitment to utilise the support of the four mainstays. And all we do is share our experience of putting the training into practice in different aspects of our life. So it's very simple but very comprehensive package that really means that there is no data stream, no thought, emotion or sensation, no experience that can't be opened up and clarified in this way. So we'll now hear from somebody who has completed the 12 empowerments, which is the most incredible training, just, just incredible, where over a course of 12 days, you look at everything that you think and you believe from the vantage of open intelligence. And in doing that, all of these belief systems are opened up and clarified. And we become clear that the things that seem to have limited us, well, maybe they don't have to limit us in the way that we thought they did.